You have no backside. <laughs> Yeehaw, partners! Today we're headed to Texas again. You see, previously on my channel, I reacted to King of the Hill, but you guys have been flooding my comment section requesting a part two. So today, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the strange and crazy medical type situations from one of your faves. King of the Hill. But before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm an ER doctor. If you enjoy what you see here on this channel, smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's dive right in. You were born with no muscle mass here, no <laughs> cushioning. For years, you've basically been sitting on your spine. You suffer from a disease called diminished gluteal syndrome, or DGS. <laughs> diminished gluteal syndrome? In my medical textbooks, I've never come across this term before. Don't think it's actually a real specific term. What does that mean? Mr. Hill, you have no ass. <laughs> come on! There are similar diagnoses to minimal to no muscles in certain areas, but not this specific diagnosis. I prescribe a gluteal orthotic device. What? It's a prosthetic you wear over your backside to help alleviate the pressure on your spine. You want me to wear a fake hiney? <laughs> I guess you can make a fake anything. But the reason for the prosthetic in this situation is to relieve pressure off his back and his spine so he doesn't have pain. Bobby, it looks like Ooh. all that activity you've been up to has finally caught up with you. You've got turf toe. Bobby's complaining of turf toe. It's a soft tissue injury. So it's a sprain of the ligaments around the large toe, which we call the great toe. It could be painful because the great toe has a lot more demand on it than the other four toes that you have. And a lot of times when there's a ligamentous injury, it takes a long time to heal. What do I do about it? Well, you play through the pain and I get to take you to the Heimlich County Sports Medicine Center. <laughs> I wish we could name our facilities here Heimlich. So what's it gonna be, doctor? Whirlpool, deep heat massage? Or are you just gonna tell my nice. son to play through the pain? Cause I'll support that. I love that Hank even knows kind of the therapies that you would do that are non-invasive. Basically physical therapy, work through it, and then obviously add on some like anti-inflammatories. None of that will be necessary. According to the blood test, your boy here has gout. Um, gout is basically deposits of these specific type of crystals into the joint itself, causing a type of arthritis and inflammation. Well, gout occurs when uric acid crystals form oh. in the bloodstream <laughs> and collect in an extremity. Oh, I guess there's an echo in here. What you need to do is quit pumping your boy full of purine rich foods like anchovies or herrings and organ meats, you know, kidneys, hearts, liver. The boy is not a <laughs> ghoul. He doesn't eat that stuff. <laughs> Try to go over the different foods that can exacerbate or bring on gout having to do with purines. I like how Hank's just pissed off. Bobby's gout will clear up if he stays off those deli foods. In the meantime, I thought this might help. Oh, no. You can't have a 12 year old walking around with a cane. If that patient came into the emergency department that I'm treating, I'll give you crutches. I will not give you a cane. Anti inflammatories, typically the medications include indomethacin, coltracine, allopurinol. Those are kind of the trifecta of medications. Two of them in the acute setting, and one helps to reduce flare ups in the future. They were pricking my back with pins. Uh, oh, you were getting an allergy <laughs> test. <laughs> you still want that Merlin tattoo? <laughs> Ouch, so I've even had that skin allergy test. Holy cow. The little needles aren't bad. They're really not that bad. It feels like somebody's scratching your skin. And then they test you for a lot of different common allergies and you'll be able to see if your body reacts to it. There's also a blood test that you can do for allergy testing as well. It's not good. And it's about Bobby. Bobby's having an allergic reaction to dander. Now your wife tells me you have a dog. Whoa, 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 slow down <laughs> there, Charlie. Now what does a dog have to do with anything? Bobby's allergic to the dog. So we use confusing words. So animal dander typically has to do with like the saliva dust particles typically, and it's usually from domesticated animals. But we're actually reacting to specific enzymes that are in those kind of like dust particles. Well, you said dander. How do you know that Peggy doesn't have the dander? <laughs> No, typically humans don't have the dander. Hank, the test was specifically for dog dander. Allergies can come and go suddenly and mysteriously. 
It's a fascinating field. <laughs> the doctor makes a good point about allergies. You can have shrimp your whole life and then one day, boom, it switches to where you have an allergy to it. What happens is your body just changes the way that it reacts to it and all of a sudden now you have an allergy. Look, if you want a dog inside, it says right here that there are several hypoallergenic breeds of dogs. There are breeds that they say they say all over the internet that are hypoallergenic, meaning that these dogs typically have hair versus fur. You can typically have an allergy to anything and still could have an allergy to a hypoallergenic type breed. Oh no! Wait. Nice! Pull the cord! Your emergency cord! Hey! <laughs> Whoa! Peggy! Holy cow! Unlikely survivable, okay? Unlikely, but some people have survived. Very few, but some have survived. It all depends on what you're falling on. And a quick note, one in 1,000 parachutes don't open. Multiple factors that are involved in this, but this is crazy. Oh, we see some feet, but we don't see any movement. Okay, think one piece. Peggy? <laughs> nice! Peggy survived it! <laughs> Woo! I'm alive. I'm alive. Uncle Hank, we're too late. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this. No, you would not become a skull immediately and it's not even the right species. Okay, move it. Good, keep her straight. So obviously, okay, first you see this, the paramedics. She needs to be into a, in a seat collar. Your wife is gonna be just fine. Now, yes. Peggy has a compression fracture of the bones in her back. Thank goodness for the mud. She would not have survived if she had fallen on concrete, Mr. Hill, yeah. or a fence. But she's okay. Yes, they're putting her into a body cast right now to immobilize her while she heals. Compressive fractures are axial, so up and down. So typically it's like landing on your feet, landing on your head, and it compresses down, or landing on your butt and compresses down. But the way Peggy had landed, she landed most likely on her back. But you can have compressive fractures. Peggy? Hank, <laughs> come on in. Look at me, <laughs> I'm in an ensemble. My top <laughs> cast and my bottom cast match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quality plaster. Hey, it's good to have a good outlook. So now, fitting into a body cast. So we don't cast somebody in the sense of like plaster around their body typically. We see this in movies and TV shows. It at least was smart with the way they put the cast to be able to allow her to like have hip mobility so she can actually go to the bathroom. She's not gonna be able to walk, right? But she'll be able to swing her legs, but they're also attached to the upper cast. Um, no. Bill's going after Bill? his food. <laughs> you don't look so Bill? good. Out cold. Bill is like overdosing on bad food, sugars and popcorn. We'll see if he's now turned into hyperglycemia, too much sugar, but I don't know any of his medical background. Sergeant, you passed out from a blood sugar spike. Blood sugar spike. So normal blood sugar, 70 to around 110, 70 to 100. And sometimes after eating food, it can go into the mid 100s, that's normal. And then your insulin will spike, so that way you can take care of the glucose. Looks like you're in the early stages of adult onset diabetes. Diabetes? That can't yep. be right. I've eaten lots of sugar my whole life. <laughs> people who have blood sugars over 200 typically are diabetics, and sometimes people can get blood sugars over 1,000. So you can go into something called DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, or severe hyperglycemia. Surely you've noticed recent changes in your body, blurred vision, frequent urination, tingling in the hands and feet. I just thought I was in love. How did this happen? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the doctor brings up a good point. So when you start having tingling, that means your nerves are affected. It means the sugar is literally messing with your nerves. Not good. Diabetes is very manageable disease. If you do a better job with diet and exercise, you'll stop it from progressing. I've even had friends that they ended up having diabetes, but they were able to reverse their diabetes and get off all medications by dietary changes. It does work. These videos and clips were hilarious. I'm starting to like King of the Hill a lot more and a lot more the more I'm viewing these clips. Do you have a favorite show that features medical situations that you want me to react to? Let me know which show or episodes in the comments below or if I missed any King of the Hill scenes that I should check out for another video. And as always, make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more fun videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.